Life on the road can be lonely or liberating depending on the lens with which you look at it. There's something about solitude that is so comforting and healing yet empty. But maybe that's what we need in life, a period of stillness to balance all the chaos. Spend enough time alone with yourself in your own head and eventually you'll hear what you truly seek in life if you choose to listen. As technology increases, I find myself drawn to a more primitive life. A life of handshakes and eye contact, sharing honest experiences with friends and strangers. So I'm currently above Silverton, Colorado, and there's this peak that looks over the entire town, but I wanna see what it looks like up there. It looks epic, and the view down in the valley here would be amazing. It's not a big mountain, but I do need to worry about clouds here because I need an hour and a half to get up and down. You can see on the other side, there's some really bad clouds, but the wind is going this direction. The clouds in this valley end up rotating out completely every about 20, 25 minutes. Clouds look good behind me, so I have about 20-25 minutes of good weather. You can see someone has actually been up here today. See, here's some boot, boot steps. This doesn't look good. Raining a little bit, not too bad. Kind of bad up here. It just changed. The goal is we're gonna go get the ridge and see what's over there. Then we'll decide what to do. So the ridge up there can't come fast enough. Oh, it's gonna turn all, all the hell, it's gonna pour. Ah. Frustrating, I gotta bail, I gotta bail. This is a lesson here. You gotta know when to put your ego aside. It, there was a little rain cloud, but now it's turned into the whole valley. I gotta get out of here. I think I can get down in about 
eight to 10 minutes and I probably have about 20 or 15, maybe 15. Oh, that's just, it's too much rain. That's gonna blow into here and just drench me. That's not fun. That's not safe, it's a steep mountain. Okay, let's head down. I think that 15 minutes is more like 10. So a tiny little pocket of sunshine, it's still raining though, it's spitting. And uh, I, got, I got a consolation prize for you guys today on this video. Uh, there's a bunch of, this is a mining town, and there's a mining camp just near town here where the workers would hold on to a cable Kind of like a ski lift. They would just stand on the cable or in a bucket on the cable and that would take them to the top of the mountain. And it's still here. It's hanging over the road. So I'll take you guys down there. I'll also show you here. There's some old mining uh, tailings and machinery just to my right. You can see these red piles here. Those are old mining tailings. And there's still this equipment sitting here from probably over a hundred years. So we've got a big ominous uh, rain cloud over there and it also doesn't look friendly here. If we look over here though, this is what just went through us. When I said it, like I had 15 minutes, it was more like four. So some of you might say like, oh, it's no problem just hiking the rain. And uh, I'm from Vancouver Island. I'm actually from a city called Port Alberni, which is the rainiest city in North America. So I know about hiking in the rain, but I have a rule and that's there's no route finding Intentionally, you can't. You don't go out route finding a, a trail in the rain. That's not smart. Um, I'm not familiar with this area. I'm not even familiar with this trail. It's just some lady down there told me, hey, there's a trail by the conifer tree in the big rock. <laughs> Let's go check out those uh, floating buckets and all that uh, mining stuff that seems very interesting. I will, I will say, they really like trains in this town. You can actually take this train They, they like trains here. They really like trains here. I will say this town, Silverton, it's, it's got world-class mountains all around. It's incredible and it's kind of heartbreaking that I'm here and it, it just turned to rain like the day that I got here. We've got rain in the forecast for the next week. Oh geez, a big cloud's coming. I gotta go. So I made the right call. I just got down. It's raining down here now and it's starting to pick up. It looks really bad over here now. And uh, there's this cute dog here. He, hey buddy. Where's your, where's your owner? Uh, I made the right call, but it sucks. Not bagging a peak, it sucks. <laughs> so we've got thunder now. So I'm at the Mayflower, May something uh, mine. It's an old mine that was operating like in the, back in the 1930s. And this is what I was talking about with the buckets that the guys were just standing in. So right above me are those buckets. So you can see those buckets go all the way across and way up there, up into the mountain. And we carry them back up here to the uh, mill. talking to one of the miner guys here and he said back in the day these bars with the cables they went all the way up into this basin 
there's an old road on the left. He said they went all the way up there, but avalanches have taken out that section of the, uh, the tramway. You can see the last one is right in the middle there. They also said back in the day they had up to eight different tramways going up there, and some of them went on top of the mountain. And over time, they whatever got knocked out by avalanches. They're decommissioned, shut down, and this is the last one that was ever built in uh, the late 19. 20s, so 1930 was finished, and then this thing ran until 1996 when it was finally shut down. He also pointed out that because of this mill, the town of Silverton was saved during the Great Depression. If it wasn't for this, they, that would have become one of the ghost towns in this area. So I kept on driving away from the uh, mill and I got back into this area called Cataract Gulch. It's just unbelievable, so gorgeous. The sun has come out, just the most beautiful scenery back here. There was actually a guy in town who's a through hiker. He's just like, oh, come back here, it's really awesome. Tucked into the rock, a thin road emerges. Likely an ATV trail goes to the base of this incredible waterfall. So I'm here at the Old Hundred Gold Mine. Not so much to see the gold mine, but to actually see the scenery around the gold mine. But take a quick peek around here. So I have no interest of going in a gold mine. I don't like being uh, claustrophobic and it's closed. So it doesn't really matter anyways. I just came out here to get these wicked aerial shots. And it's cool actually seeing the, uh, the gold mine way up there from the sky. So I got to get back in town now. It's starting to get, ah, the, the, site, the, the light's about to go down and I'm pretty, pretty far out in the bush right now. 